It is absolutely unlivable. And uh, the World Food Program estimates now that one quarter of the population of the Gaza Strip at this moment are starving. So this is 500,000 people. It's not a small number. People in Gaza are worried about the next meal, how they can secure it or if they can secure it. Uh, there are uh, large areas of the Gaza Strip where there is population still living in the north of Gaza Strip with zero access to, to aid or food. Uh, people are basically living on scraps and on what's left over in the bombarded houses. Uh, water is not accessible, medication is not accessible, and when we talk about the 250 people died dead a day, we, we even don't count uh, all these people who died because of illnesses, lack of uh, access to basic medications for uh, diseases like uh, uh, diabetes or uh, blood pressure or others. I know from friends and family last week three people were uh, died because of such illnesses only last week and uh, all of these are not even counted as casualties. Uh, there are estimations that people in the Gaza Strip will suffer um, even there is rough estimations that a quarter would be dead a year after the war because of uh, illnesses and untreated symptoms, because of the spread of uh, diseases that are uh, contagious. Right now, uh, we have lots of uh, flu symptoms similar to COVID. Of course, it's not tested. No one knows if there are new varieties of COVID is evolving in the Gaza Strip. Uh, there are lots of uh, uh, diseases that the newborn children endure, including uh, hydration, diarrhea, and others because of lack, uh, lack of access to, to basic food. So we are talking not only about the casualties uh, who are dead because of direct bombardment or houses falling on their heads, but we are also talking about the uh, unrecorded um, and underreported uh, illnesses.